Professor uh, Esther Wojcicki, your book, How to Raise Successful People, is based on uh, twofold experience as an educator and also as a parent. In 80s, you founded a world famous program in media at Palo Alto High School, where you mentored uh, the actor James Franco, for instance. But you also uh, raised uh, three very successful daughters, one of them being the CEO of YouTube. Your book, How to Raise uh, Successful People, is based on five fundamental values, trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and uh, kindness. Speaking of trust, your book opens with an intriguing example of the way in which parents can instill trust in their kids. Shopping alone, you say, can be a good educational activity for kids, even for preschoolers. Isn't that too risky? Well, in today's world, they get their fear from the internet. So if you just think about it, years ago, it took a long time to get information. And today we get a lot of information quickly. And also we get a lot of fake information. And so what happened is it made parents more fearful than they used to be um, prior to the internet. And they're afraid to let their kids do a lot of things. And one of them they're afraid of is letting kids do shopping. And um, so, of course, I remember what it was like before the internet. And I remember, see that the world is not any more dangerous. If anything, it's safer now. And so, yes, I think this is something that parents can do. And it gives kids an incredible sense of competence and empowerment. So I let my children do the shopping. And they love to do the shopping. It was great for me because they bought a lot of interesting things. And then there was no problem with what they were eating. They always wanted to eat what they bought. Um, so that was, that was a really great idea. Also, today with my grandchildren, who are pretty young, actually, um, eight, and eight, nine, ten, I let them go shopping as well. And shopping for things like clothing, you know, it's really a safe place. I, I don't see any real dangers in, in any of the stores. So that is one thing I suggest that parents can do. And if they want to be in the store while the kids are shopping so that they can easily find them, that's okay. But I, I actually dropped them off at the store and uh, they loved it. And it was great. Okay, uh, let us discuss about the second basic value in parenting, respect. In your opinion, parents uh, should want the uh, children to be successful in whatever the child picks, not in what the parent chooses. But how can a parent be sure that uh, vocational and life choices of children are good and appropriate? That they're living with very different perspective than you are living and that you lived as a child, because the world is a place now. And so while you might want to steer your child into um, you know, a traditional family um, profession, they may not want to do that, do something else. And if you look with perspective on the jobs that pay the most today, they weren't, nobody even thought about them 10 years ago, just 10 years ago. So here is a job that pays over $100,000 to start. It's called a full stack developer. I would say that most parents don't even know what that is. And that is for computer engineering. There are a lot of jobs out there that are very um, good jobs for kids to have that parents don't even know about. So I would always give my children an opportunity to consider a profession that they want to do. Of course, if your family has a history of being doctors for centuries or lawyers for centuries, you give them the option. But if they don't want to follow that option, I would let them choose their own path because we have to remember it's their life and they have to live with the choice. And so you want to make sure that they're happy with that choice. 
So that's why I give them that option. Uh, Professor Wojcicki, there is another value you cherish in your book, how to raise uh, successful people, and that is independence. You say that uh, the first lesson of independence for a child is to learn how to sleep alone. Could you elaborate? Yes. So the first lesson that a child needs to learn when they're a little baby is how to self-soothe. Self-soothe means to somehow take care of themselves when they're a little bit unhappy. And that also extends to them being able to put themselves to sleep. If the child is dependent on you to rock them constantly or to be in a position of constantly soothing them, they are then trained to be dependent on you. And if you have a child that has colic or is sickly, that's a different story. They then need to be dependent on you for help. But the normal child can learn very quickly within the first three months how to put themselves to sleep and then how to basically take care of their needs. When, you know, there's a lot of times when a child might be bored or irritated or fearful. And if they know how to self-soothe, take care of their own needs, they'll be a happier child. And so, yes, I start out with this um, way of taking care of yourself. Okay. Uh, you're not just a parent, as I already said, but you're, you're also a very uh, successful and well-known uh, educator. And the next question, it's about school. In the competitive schools of our days, you know, there is little room for collaboration in the classroom. What could a teacher do in order to encourage the collaboration uh, in the classroom, uh, supposing that they do not have enough technological skills for editing a newspaper, like, like you and your uh, students did? Well, I think all people need to realize what the education research shows. And education research shows that 80% of the learning takes place outside the classroom, 80%. And so my theory is if 80% is taking place outside the classroom, why don't I make my classroom more like the outside? And so the outside is all about interaction and relationships, kids talking to each other, um, you know, having a, doing things together, And so what I do is create within my classroom peer groups, groups of kids in groups of two, three, four, where they work together on a project. And yes, I've done journalism. That was my primary focus. But I've also taught English and I've taught history. And you could do the same thing with those subjects because what you do is explain what The, what your, the lesson is for the day, and then have kids work together on the assignment or the homework or the project and discuss within that group what are some of their ideas. And I, I suggest all teachers to do this. First of all, it's so much easier for the teacher. Because what you want to do is enable those kids to get together in little groups in those Zoom classes and talk to each other. That's how the learning is going to take place. And nobody likes to listen to a lecture for one hour after another hour after another hour. So mm -hmm. let's see what we can do to make education more effective and more exciting. I see. Last uh, but not least, your book, How to Raise Successful People, stresses on importance of kindness. Uh, it is not just a soft skill appreciated in business organization, as you point in your book, but uh, kindness is very, is very important, is a very important virtue in everyday life, including pandemic times we are going through. And uh, my question is, uh, how could parents use all this COVID turmoil in order to teach their kids about empathy and uh, kindness? There's so many people in the world today, they're having serious problems as a result of the pandemic and the result of the climate change. Uh, it's, it's so sad. Every morning I read the newspaper and every morning 
I become more upset and depressed about what can we do to help each other. And so I think there's a lot of things that we can do in terms of kindness, being helpful and kind to other people that are, that are friends or people that we don't even know. And as a teacher, I think it's really important to be understanding and kind to your students. And one thing I realized very early into my teaching is that the kids might forget what I said and they might forget what I did in class that day, but they will never forget when I am kind to them. And I tell you, that's really important. I have kids that graduated 20 years ago or even more that come back and tell me how kind I was and what it meant to them and how they, and that, how that gave them, empowered them to do what they wanted to do and to be good students. And also it's really important. Kindness also involves patience and being patient with people and forgiving them whenever there is a problem, you know, if they've done something that is really um, is problematic. And this um, a wonderful just, uh, Supreme Court justice that just died, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, one thing that she said that I've always used is it's important for you to be a little bit deaf. And what she was saying by that is that when people say things that are mean or nasty or out of anger, you know, before you respond, just don't listen too much because it's important for you not to respond with anger so quickly. You know, give them a chance to maybe, you know, maybe they don't really feel as badly as they say. Um, so you really need to be kind to each other in the world. It makes a really big difference for everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is one of the reasons that I, I emphasize kindness. We need it in our world today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wojcicki, for your precious advice. And thank you for uh, the wisdom you shared in your book, How to Raise Successful People. Well, thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.